Hello, it's Dr. Albert Mensa again. Here today we're going to talk about a condition that psychiatry refers to, or psychology refers to, as intermittent explosive disorder. So let's talk about this a little bit. The idea here is that you can get very angry or even violent um, at the smallest stimuli. What does that really mean? Well, you know, in our world, we talk about molecular mechanisms that can lead to behavior, thought challenges, disorders, and emotionality. So while psychiatry and psychology in its traditional state these days will talk about trauma in childhood, they'll talk about serotonin issues, they'll talk about environmental circumstances as being causes or foundational issues that lead to intermittent explosive disorder, well, we in orthomolecular medicine go, hey, this is really pyral disorder, okay? Pyral disorder does exactly those things that are termed as intermittent explosive disorder. Severe moodiness, going from calm to anger to rageful in a drop of an eye. Overreacting. You folks out there know that. You sit there and we talk about pyro disorder all the time. You've seen the videos. You've explored it on YouTube. You've heard a lot of wrong stuff about it too, but still, the symptoms are key. We have individuals who are anxious, depressed, moody, rageful. They oftentimes are sensitive to light or sound or odors or textures, and they react or overreact disproportionately to the issue at hand. Many of you recognize that these people at home are kind of so volatile that people will say they, re they tend to um, walk on eggshells around their family members, okay? So when we're talking about IED or intermittent explosive disorder, let's really start thinking at a molecular basis. And number one on our list is pyro disorder. These same individuals have sensitivities to light or sound or odors or textures, and that extremely rapidly cycling mood is the key to pyrals. But you know what's really interesting too? As I was thinking more and more about this, given the fact that traditional medicine is looking at symptoms that lead to the diagnosis of intermittent explosive disorder, you know, there are other chemistries that can produce similar symptoms as well. So let's talk, for example, about copper toxicity. What is copper toxicity? Yes, I know you're thinking, well, this is one of those deals where it's about females, right? And isn't intermittent explosive disorder oftentimes seen more so in males and da da da? Well, it can be seen in both, but yes, males and copper toxicity. We talk about this not too recently in one of our, our most recent blogs. With copper toxicity, males can be anxious, depressed, moody, rageful, volatile, and violent. So does this not sound like it could also be misdiagnosed as an intermittent explosive disorder? Okay. These males are oftentimes very sensitive to the smallest stimuli. Now, here's the thing, though. A male with copper toxicity will often be impulsive, agitated, and um, violent, or even just extremely irritable to say the least. However, they will be remorseful about what happened. Whatever it is they did, they're very sorry that they did it. You don't typically see that remorse with pyral disorder. The third biochemical imbalance that could be an underlying cause or consideration, we actually know about it in traditional medicine, but we don't always think about it in terms of a psychiatric disorder. That one we call reactive hypoglycemia. And folks, I've got to tell you, I will confess, I live that one. My family members and friends and boy, even my staff know that guy has got to eat something. Otherwise, watch out for who he may become. Because you get to a certain point of hypoglycemia, in other words, low blood sugars. And the smallest things can set you off. Talk about Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk. Oh my goodness, Dr. Mensa and the Incredible Hulk. It's one of those things, I confess, okay, it is true. The, and it comes on very suddenly. You feel this gradual drop in sugar, and before you know it, when someone does something simple or 
uh, a situation presents itself, you overreact. And it can be in a very strong and severe sort of way. And people look at you like, what the heck is wrong with you? So when we're talking about intermittent explosive disorder, I want you to move away from this idea that this is actually a mental health issue. It's not about the mind. As a matter of fact, you know, the brain and the body here are often going together hand in hand. Not necessarily one versus the other. It could be a combination. One of the things they talk about with regard to intermittent explosive disorder is that this may be a genetic phenomenon. It can move through families. Well, guess what? So can pyro disorder and copper toxicity. So can reactive hypoglycemia. All right? Now, folks, you've heard me say a million times, if you're Irish or Celtic, if you are Scandinavian, you likely speaking have a genetic version of pyro disorder. Okay? If you're a copper toxic female, you can pass on those detoxification challenges to um, your daughters or to your sons. Okay? So that's how a male gets the copper toxicity piece. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl with regard to reactive hypoglycemia. Okay? But those same tendencies can be passed on from generation to generation. So here we've talked about probably three of the most common and most powerful candidates that could be underlying your hyper-reactive, over-sensitive, emotionally dysregulated state. Okay? So let's think about what lies underneath the emotionality, as opposed to simply describing the emotionality, giving it a lovely term, and then calling it a mental health disorder. Why do we make so much of a big deal about this, you might be asking yourself. Well, recently because it's treatable. It's not some mystic mental health phenomenon. Typically speaking, this intermittent explosive disorder is actually about a chemical imbalance that can be easily corrected. Okay, anywhere within a few weeks to a few months. And if it's reactive hypoglycemia, guess what? Go eat. Okay, eat something decent, and you're going to be feeling much better very quickly. Not even 24 hours, not even 10 minutes. It's that kind of good. Trust me, I know. Let's just remember there are underlying causes afoot for many of our emotionally dysregulated symptomatologies, and intermittent explosive disorder is no exception to the rule. Let's find the underlying cause, treat it, and then have a great, peaceful, and balanced day. I'm Dr. Mensa, the Mensa Medical.